Welcome back to Under Oath. Today we're talking to actor Barry Corbin. Barry, can you hear me? I can. I got to tell you, Barry, I, I have loved almost everything. Actually, I've loved everything you've ever been in and the opportunity to be able to talk with you. But before we get into that, you know, you're actually going to be touring with a show called An Evening with Barry Corbin. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Well, it's uh, uh, it's just a, uh, an overall view of my career. I, I start out uh, and uh, do a little piece of Shakespeare, and then I talk about uh, growing up in West Texas and uh, in my early career in the theater back in the in the East there. Then I, I talk about a uh, little bit about the movies, but mainly I save that for the second half of the show, which is question and answer deal. I open it up to the audience for questions and answers. And how many cities are you going to be touring? Uh, well, so far I've done about, uh, I think I've done 15. Let me ask you a question about how long is the show? Uh, it's uh, it, it runs about two hours. And then we have a, then I stay around and sign autographs and take pictures with people as long as they, as long as they want to, you know. So I'm usually there for three and a half, four hours. That's a haul. You know, the question I, I, I do stand up. So I do 45 minutes at most. I mean, two hours on the stage alone. I mean, that has to be a little exhausting. Well, it, it's, it's a little tiring, but it's, it's fun, you know. I, I get the, it's energizing, really. I get I get a lot of energy from the audience. I just watched another show you were in called The Ranch, and I've been uh, tracking you on television for a long time. You know, do you see there's a difference now between a show that like streams where you can watch it all at one time, or one you have to wait every week for? Well, I don't know. I I don't do the streaming thing because I I I can't. Uh, I can't concentrate on that thing that long. I do, uh, you know, I'll, do, I'll watch maybe two episodes or something and uh, then let it rest and go back to it later. But, uh, you know, a lot of people sit and watch the whole, uh, whole uh, show, a whole season in one setting. I, I don't know how anybody does that. I think it's just in people's nature now. They get so they want the next one over and over. And I agree with you. I think you lose a lot of the heart of the show when you're speeding through something, you know. And, and that's why I have a difficulty doing that. Yeah, I, will, I like to watch uh, watch an episode and then let that let that sit, and uh, next day or two or three days later, watch the next one. You know. You know, there are people who have distinctive voices in the world. You know, when I think about the just the minute I hear that voice, I know who that actor is. And I know the first half of your career before you were 40, you were on the stage. Now you have a, I have a side, I, I was born in the South. So I have a certain accent every once in a while. How do you get rid of that Southern accent when you're doing like Shakespeare? Well, I don't know. I just, I just do. Now you got kids, you got grandkids, you know, you've been in so much. If you had to recommend. If you had to recommend, so you know, say, hey, listen, uh, grandchild, child, I, this is what I want you to watch. This is what I consider my best work. Let's see, for my kids, I'd, I'd say, uh, uh, wouldn't say the ranch. That's got some rough language in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think, uh, well, I'd, I'd say a uh, the, the thing called, uh, a little movie called Six Pack. Which was uh, about uh, six kids, six orphans who go to work for a race car driver. Or as Kenny Rogers, I play a mean sheriff who's trying to catch the kids and put them in the orphan's home. What's so weird about the characters you play is the minute we see you on, the minute we hear your voice, it's hard to see you as a villain a lot of times because you come off so likable. And I, I think that's so. It's such a gift that some people have this. I mean, when you find out you're playing a villain, is it exciting, or would you rather play more of a, a likable character? No, oh, I like I, I like to mix it up. I like uh, I like to play a, a comedy, and then I like to play a one that's a little more serious. I always try to find something com uh, comical about it because 
I think there's a, a market for that. You know, I think we ought to keep things a little bit light. You know, I think when we we think about some of your iconic roles, I think of Paul, you know, the general you played in War Game because there's a quote that I can't get over. And my producer actually said, you have to ask him about this quote. And he goes, because he knew it by heart. And it was like, damn it, I'd piss on a spark plug if I thought it did any good. I mean, do you make a line like that your own, or is that just what it's on the script? Well, it was uh, that was an accident. What, what happened was the guy that, uh, that Matthew pushed out of the way of the computer was, the, was our technical advisor. He was an Air Force major. And he said, wait a minute, I'd never let this kid into the computer without the direct order from the general. So John Madden, who was directing, said, can you think of a colorful way to order him into the computer? And I said, yeah, I believe I can. He said, you want to tell me what it is? I said, no, let's just shoot it. <laughs> so, they, so they did, and everybody laughed, you know. So he said, hey, we had to do it again. I thought it was just, I thought I was just making a joke. I didn't think anybody use it. He said, no, let's do it again. Uh, everybody be serious. We did it again. I, th- I still thought they'd replace it in in, the, in post-production, but they didn't. They kept it in. And uh, so that was, that was how that came about. I just, I just said it off the top of my head. That's hysterical. I, I, I love a back-end story like this, but what I really love best is you didn't even get into film or television till uh into your 40s and you had already been performing for 20 years on stage did you feel like you had an advantage over a lot of actors because of that 20 years of stage work i think so i think uh, you know that's good training for you you know but uh, uh i think as walter Matthau said that uh, film acting is retirement acting there i got all your old tricks you learned in stock and that's pretty much true you know, you, you've had, you had 20 years and then you had 40 years, you know, on television and film. Um, and now you're getting back on the stage. I mean, did you, I assume you had this, you missed it after all those years. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'd go back to a, to a play once in a while, but, uh, I haven't had time and, and, the, you know, when I was raising kids and all that, now I'm, uh, I've kind of, I've got great grandkids and I've just. You know, now I'm kind of loose end, so I can do anything I want to. Now, you're about, I think you're 83, 84 right now? Yeah, 83. Now, you're doing this tour right now, and you're you're doing, you're doing giving your life, and you're putting your life out there to people. Um, I, I assume some of your kids have seen this show. Yeah, but, uh, some of my kids have. My daughter's seen most of them. My sons haven't seen any of them yet. You think it'd be unusual for them to see, to go, oh, wow, I didn't realize my dad did all this. I know he was an actor, but I didn't know what really went into all of it. Yeah, I think most, uh, for the most part, they know all that. Because you know, well, they probably heard most of my stories <laughs> telling the show. Now, as an actor, a lot of a lot of children of actors want to get into acting. They want to follow their father or their grandfather's footsteps. Did you ever have to, you know, give the hard news to somebody? It's going to be a hard life. It's not going to be easy. Oh yeah, yeah. My, my youngest son is an actor. He's, uh, uh, you know, he does work once in a while. And my uh, grandson, my youngest grandson, is an actor. He's in a show called The Chosen right now, and. Uh, Let's see, my, uh, we've got a great grandson that's sort of, sort of a fan of the theater. He might, he might turn into an actor. I don't know whether he's going to or not, but he says he wants to. Uh, most of them, though, are not, uh, you know, most of them are not in the business. Now, you've had this unbelievable career, and it's still going, and I'm sure people always ask you for advice. As a starting actor, you know, what advice would you give them? And I know it's a generic question, but somebody who's been out there as long as you have, 
you know, I can't even imagine if you said, what is the most important thing you can do if you want to get into this field? Well, if you can figure out something else you'd, rather, you'd, you'd like to do and uh, that uh, you can make some money at, I'd, I'd suggest you do that and, uh, and, and do, the, do the community theater for, for your for your acting, because you can, uh, as an actor, you don't get to act a whole lot. Most of the time, you're, you're looking for work, and uh, it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's a tough business. One of the things I like best about your your history was the reason you got into television and film acting, and it had a lot to do with a blackout in New York and you know some craziness going on. Is that what really pushed you into television and movies? That was always my goal anyway. I always was interested. I, that my first interest in it was because of the B-Westerns I used to go to when I was a kid. So it, uh, you know, it was, uh, it, it was always in the back of my mind that that's what I wanted, I wanted to do, to do, uh, do Western movies. Now, as far as acting goes, I know a lot of actors have a problem seeing themselves on TV or going to the movies and watching them themselves. Is that something you carry, or are you good with it? Oh, I'm fine with it. It's uh, I, I like to wait and see them later. You know, I, I like to see my own movies. I you know, like watching the home movie. It brings back memories of, uh, of the experience. But uh, go see a movie I just finished, I'm not, I don't really care about that. So they're going back in history. When you see that, do the memories come flooding back, or do you just go, "Yeah, that, I I love that role." Oh yeah, if I go back and watch war games or something, that's uh, you know, I remember uh, my my youngest son was born uh, second day I worked on war games. So that's uh, how I remember his birthday. <laughs> that's funny. I, I, the only reason I remember your birthday is because I was on war games at the time. That's funny. I like that. Now you're, when you see these, when you go back and watch yourself again and you see these moments, I mean, I'm sure you've worked with some fantastic actors over the years. Was there any actor that you said, you know, I really would have loved just spending time on stage with that person? Oh yeah. There's uh, a lot of them. Uh, Ernie Borden and I'd like to have been on stage with. Peter Falk. So oh, there, there were some that, that I was on stage with that were, were great. Uh, Victor Jory, who was an old character actor in the movies, played bad guys mostly. There, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, a lot of people I wish I'd been able to been on been on stage with. Now, the tour that you're going on is I'm trying to figure out. Are you go, are you touching through Florida or is it going to be mainly the West Coast? Anybody who wants to see it can uh, can book the thing through my website, barrycorbin.com. Go to events and uh, you can book the show any, anywhere. Well, I, I hope you do come come this way because I would love to see it. And I can't thank you enough for your time, Barry. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it. We appreciate your time.